Hola amigos, que tal? It's Joy here from Spain Speaks with a video today for people that are planning on moving to Spain sometime in the near future, 2021 and beyond. And uh, we're going to have a chat today about some of the things that you'll need to hit the ground running if you decide to move to this country. Now today's video is sponsored by Skillshare and I'll tell you a little bit more about Skillshare during the video. Now as I said, today's video is for people that are planning to move to Spain sometime in the near future, maybe this year, maybe next year, maybe in three years time. But the information that I'm going to give today will hopefully make your life a little bit easier when you move to this country. So what are some of the things that can help you make that transition to living in a country like Spain? Now the first thing I'm going to talk about is language and it may seem obvious that you need to learn Spanish before you come to live in a country like Spain but believe me a lot of people do not learn the language before they come here. They think that they're going to pick it up when they get here and a lot of the times it proves too difficult. They fall into these expat areas where there's lots of expats living and they go through their life here in Spain not speaking anything else than English and a little bit of Spanish but in my opinion it is fundamental to have a decent level of Spanish before you get to this country if you're planning to live here. For example a B1 level of Spanish or an intermediate level of Spanish before you get here and that is going to make your life a whole lot easier when it comes to doing basic things in this country. Of course you can hire people to do things for you, you can hire translators but I think it's easier to learn the language and let's be honest Spanish is not a difficult language to learn. You have to work at it but if you can speak English you should be able to learn Spanish because they have some similarities. For example they are both subject verb object languages which means that every sentence has to have a subject, a verb and an object. For example, I like to go to the beach in Spanish, me gusta ir a la playa. So you can learn the language quite easily and as I said before you come it will help you adapt quicker in this country. And there are so many ways to learn a language nowadays. You can learn a language online, you can go to traditional academies, you can get books easily that can teach you Spanish. And it's not like when I started learning Spanish many many years ago when it wasn't easy to get your hands on material. The internet basically didn't exist back then but nowadays on the internet places like YouTube for example there are literally thousands and thousands of Spanish teachers willing to show you how to speak the language. And if you're lucky enough to have learned a little bit of Spanish when you were at high school that is also going to come in very handy. That wasn't my case. I started learning Spanish when I was 23 or 24 years of age so it wasn't easy for me. So if you picked up a bit of Spanish at high school it should be easier to learn the language. Now the second thing I'm going to talk about is choosing the best place to live here in Spain. Whether you decide to live on the mainland here where I am, I'm in Madrid, I'm in the center of the country, whether you decide to live on the coast, maybe Alicante, maybe Valencia, maybe Malaga, one of the many coastal areas here in Spain, maybe you want to go and live on one of the islands, for example in the Canary Islands or in the Balearic Islands, there is lots and lots of choice. The north of the country also is a very attractive place. You need to understand that Spain is a very diverse country when it comes to geography and also when it comes to culture. The north of the country is a lot different to the south especially when it comes to weather. The weather in the north of the country can be quite mild, quite rainy and then if you go to a place like Andalusia down in the south of the country you have a fantastic Mediterranean climate down there. In this part of the world where I am, I'm in the center of the country as I just mentioned, the weather here is quite extreme. It can be quite cold in the winter. In fact this year we had one of the biggest snowstorms ever recorded here in Spain and then summers can be very very hot and that's the characteristic for a lot of places in the interior part of Spain. And then of course you have to decide whether you want to live in a big city, a small city, a medium-sized city, a town or a village because there are lots of options when it comes to choosing a place to live as well. As I said I'm here in Madrid which is the capital city of Spain. It's also the biggest city in Spain, something like four million people and inside this autonomous community and that's something that I'll mention a little bit later that Spain is made up of 17 autonomous communities. This autonomous community has a population of about 7 million people. And if you don't like big cities, if you don't like crowds, if you don't like a lot of people, there are loads of underpopulated places in this country. In fact, that's one of the big problems that Spain is facing at the moment, that people are abandoning some areas around the country and moving to cities like Madrid, Barcelona and other big cities and are abandoning rural life. And in fact, many rural areas in 
the country are offering incentives for people to go and live there. So you could look into that as well. But as I said, when it comes to finding an area to live here in Spain, there is a lot of choice. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Spain is a very diverse country. I said before it has 17 autonomous communities. Basically, they operate like states. There's a central government and then there are 17 autonomous governments as well and two autonomous cities in the north of Africa. And as I also said earlier, Spain is a very diverse country when it comes to culture. And that's something that I also need to mention. I mentioned before just how important it was to learn the language of the country, Spanish, Espanol, but keep in mind that there are some parts of the country where another language is spoken. For example, if you go to Catalonia, they speak Catalan. If you go to Valencia, they speak Valenciano. If you go to Galicia, in the north of the country, they speak Gallego. In the Basque country, they have their own language as well. And there are a couple of other languages spoken around the country as well. But Castellano Spanish is the dominant language in the country. And if you learn that one first and pick up maybe one of those other languages later, if you do decide to go to one of those areas, I think that would be the way to go. Now, just to interrupt the video there to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Now, you've probably heard about Skillshare, but if you haven't, it's an online learning community for creatives where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on a wide range of topics like photography, video editing, productivity, cooking, gardening, and many more. Now, if you're thinking about moving abroad to Spain or another country, you'll find classes on Skillshare to help you do just that. For example, if you want to know if moving abroad is right for you, these classes by Kat Smith could help you decide. And if you want to learn a new language or perfect your foreign language skills before you get there, you'll find hundreds of classes on Skillshare to help you with that as well. Another good thing about Skillshare is that it has classes to suit any skill level. So it doesn't matter if you are a beginner, a pro, a dabbler, or a master, you'll find a class for you on Skillshare. Skillshare is also really affordable and a yearly subscription costs less than $10 a month. And the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership so you can check it out for yourself. So do yourself a favor and click that link in the description and check out Skillshare for yourself. Now back to the video. Now another thing that you should know before you come to live in a country like Spain is that things operate a little bit differently here to other countries, especially English speaking countries when it comes to timetable meal times and things like that. In fact, that was one of the things that took me a long time to get used to when I came to live in this country some 22 years ago, the timetables. And basically everything in Spain happens later than in Australia, for example, which is where I come from. The mornings can be similar, for example, in a big city like Madrid, when people get up to go to work, they more or less start work at the same time, around nine o'clock in the morning, but shops don't open until 10 a.m. And that normality continues up until about two o'clock when people stop for lunch and then after lunch everything changes and it's that afternoon period when things start to get pushed back for example dinner time a lot of people don't have dinner here until 9 p.m. during the week sometimes later and then at weekends it can be even later and that is in part related to that later starting time for lunch as I said people start lunch around 2 p.m. the time for lunch can vary 30 minutes one hour some people even have two hours for lunch but you won't see anybody having lunch at 12 midday here in Spain in fact they're probably having a snack preparing for their lunch later on that afternoon and when it comes to dinner as I briefly mentioned before prepare yourself for late dinners. If you're used to having dinner around 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., forget about it here in Spain. You can't even go to a restaurant at that time because they're not open, basically. A lot of restaurants won't open until 8.30 or maybe even 9 p.m., and that's when Spanish people normally start to head out for dinner. And then after dinner, especially at the weekends, the nights can get very, very long, especially if you're young. In fact, a lot of nightclubs and night venues here in Spain won't start to warm up until around 1 a.m. or maybe even later in the summer months of the year. So different timetables is something that you need to be aware of if you're planning to come and live in Spain. Now when it comes to adapting to life in Spain, it's going to be different if you come to Spain to work or whether you come to Spain to retire. And believe me, there's a big difference between those two things. As I have said many times on this channel, working in Spain is no piece of cake, yet retirees I think are gonna be able to adapt quicker to life here in Spain because you don't have to worry about finding a job, making ends meet in one of the most difficult labor markets in Western Europe. Now don't get me wrong, it's not impossible 
impossible to find a job in Spain. It's not impossible to find a good job, but it's not easy. You only have to look at the unemployment figures in this country to realize that a lot of local people, a lot of Spanish people, can't find a good job. So why are you going to be able to find a good job coming from another country into this one? So that is something that you are always going to have to keep in mind. What type of job are you looking for? Is there a market here in Spain for that type of job? And do you know how much money you're going to be making in order to live comfortably in this country? Now, if you come to Spain as a retiree, you don't have to worry about those things. Of course, you do have to worry about certain income requirements that are now in place, especially if you are in the UK. That is something new for people from the UK. And if you're coming from a country outside the European Union or you're not a European citizen, that is also something that you have to keep in mind. But if you are able to meet those income requirements, you are going to have a fantastic life as a retiree in this country, especially if you decide to live in some of the Mediterranean areas of the country or a place like the Canary Islands where the weather is fantastic 12 months of the year and life is cheap or probably cheaper than where you are at the moment. So we'll talk a little bit about what it's like to work in Spain and how easy or how hard it is to get used to the work routine in this country. Now, because it is difficult to get a job in Spain and because Spain suffers from very high unemployment, around 17% currently, and that is on the way up, you're most likely going to have to work in a big city, Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, Malaga, Bilbao, or one of the other big cities in the country. Because if you choose to live in a smaller place, you're not gonna have work opportunities if you're trying to get a job working for someone else. If you're a digital nomad, there's no problem. You can work anywhere because there are good internet connections around the country and working from home or working remotely is quite easy nowadays. But if you plan to work for a Spanish company, the odds are that you're gonna to have to live in one of the big cities here in Spain. And that's also something that is going to affect how long it takes you to adapt to life here. And in my opinion, big cities here in Spain have pros, but they also have a lot of cons. And one of the main cons is what I have here behind me, endless traffic. So you might have to plan for quite a long commute every day. And that was my case when I first came to live in this part of Madrid. It's about a 45 minute trip into the center. It can be even longer. And that is something that took me a while to get used to as well, because it's an endless ride on the metro. And you'll also have to get used to the work timetables in this country because they can differ and they might be different from the ones that you were used to. For example, in some of the big companies here, it's quite common, or at least it was common up until recently, for people to be stuck in the office until around 7 p.m., 7.30 p.m., even later if you are in a managerial position. So if you're planning to work in Spain, be prepared for long hours. Now, another important thing to keep in mind if you're thinking of coming to live in Spain is how easy is it going to be for you to get around? Do you want to live close to an airport? Do you want to live close to a train station? Are you thinking about buying a car? Are you going to use public transport? Those are things that you need to keep in mind before you come to live here because they can vary according to where you live in the country. Now, if you're coming to live in one of the big cities here in Spain, there's no problem because all of the big cities here in Spain, the Madrids, the Barcelona, the Malagas, the Valencias, as I said before, those big cities have fantastic transport options, international airports, and it's really easy to get in and out of those cities. But if you're going to live in one of the smaller cities around the country, that might not be the case. And you're going to have to also check whether the city that you're planning to live in is well connected to one of those bigger cities that I mentioned before. When it comes to moving around the country by train, Spain does have a decent rail network. It's not the best rail network in Europe, but it's not the worst either and you'll find that most of the big cities here in Spain and even the regional cities are fairly well connected by train and when it comes to public transport that is also going to vary according to where you are Madrid fantastic public transport Barcelona fantastic public transport Bilbao fantastic public transport but there are some cities especially some of the more regional smaller cities where public transport is not that good. Of course, they'll have a bus system up and running, but public transport won't be as good in those smaller cities as it is in some of the bigger cities here in Spain. And the other option, of course, is to buy a car. You might find yourself in a place where a car is necessary. Again, if you're in one of the bigger cities, it might not be necessary to have a car. But if you're living in one of the more remote areas of the country, a car will most likely be a must. And remember that if you're coming to Spain from outside the EU, you might have to get a Spanish driver's license because Spain doesn't have a 
driver's license exchange program with all countries. If you're from the European Union, there's no problem. But if you're coming from a country like Australia, like me, I had to sit my driver's test again in this country. So keep that in mind if you are planning to drive here in Spain. But a positive aspect of having a car in this country is that the road system is very good, especially if you live in a place like Madrid. They have fantastic roads that will take you anywhere around the country. A very good motorway system, so you might decide that having a car is the best way to move around this country. So your transport options when it comes to moving around the country also something that you should take into consideration before you come. So I'll start to wrap the video up. In general, I'd say that Spain is not a difficult country to get used to. There's a fairly easy way of life here. Spanish people, as I have said numerous times, are fairly easy going. They're not really in your face. They live and let live. And that could be a slogan that I would associate to this country. People live and let you live. And although there will be an adaptation process, it could be long, it could be short, depending on what type of person you are. As I said, in general, things are fairly easy going in this country. So I'll wrap the video up here now. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next video about Spain. Hasta luego.